welcome back to Cracking On With The Sun. How are you doing? We are kind of like halfway through the series now, which is kind of sad. I know. What I think is really interesting today is you've come in mourning for Hannah Elizabeth. (laughs) Do you know what I have? I mean, I was going on yesterday. Yeah, about, so obviously yesterday I was in mourning for Ekinsu and Davide. Today you were in mourning for Hannah Elizabeth. I am. Do you know what though? I thought about it this morning was like, what would Hannah Elizabeth want for a mourning outfit? Mm-hmm. So I came in particularly extra knitwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're remaining, remaining true to yourself with the knitwear. Yeah. But then also jazzing it up with, with a Hannah, Hannah Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Well, I thought that the nipple tassels were probably a no, given it's just a casual Thursday in the office. Well, so. That's disappointing. I would have liked to have seen <laughs> Probably not appropriate for a 5pm podcast. We could do like a cracking on later. Oh my God, that would be good. Let's switch that to the bosses. Yeah, they'd love that. Yes, I'm so gutted about Hannah. Because as I was saying, I just think that she brought like a different energy to the group. But we were all getting a bit fed up with the friendship couples, the people who are just cruising along for a free holiday. And sadly, she had ended it with Tyler and it was just bad timing, really. And no one had come in that caught her eye. What I was thinking is I know that we'd said that what would be brilliant is if they managed to get John, Towie John, yeah, her obviously fiance mm-hmm. <laughs> from um, series one yeah. on. Um, and I think that basically what we can take from this is that he wouldn't do it. Mm. because I just think that ITV probably would have really tried because I know that from everything we're hearing, they were desperate to keep Hannah on um, because she's just yeah. such a legend, isn't she? And I know looking at Twitter last night, everyone was devastated to lose Hannah. Yeah. Well, it was the like Islanders' decision, which I actually was surprised about because she's liked so much by all the boys and all the girls. Mm. I was surprised. I did think Tyler was going to be under threat because of Kaz being in there and sort of, you know, it had ended with Hannah. Mm. But yeah, it was, um, that was a tough blow. So I am in mourning. It's been a tough week. I can see <laughs> have a day and now Hannah Elizabeth. Will we ever oh, recover? I don't think so. What did you think of their exit interviews? Because obviously um, this was Maya having to do two couples at once. Um, yeah. To be honest, really short and sweet, but... Is that a bad thing? Sometimes it can just be dragged out and they're saying the same things that you've heard already. But it did feel as if, I don't know, there's a, we're lacking something. Maybe. I agree. Um, you know, it was it's, it's, it feels rushed. We don't get into any sort of depth at all. Yeah. There's no juice. No. There's no tea. And That's wh- why everyone comes to this podcast, because we have more gossip. <laughs> <laughs> they have nothing. They bring nothing. I, do you know what I thought is that um, I feel like it was just yesterday when we were saying that, um, you know, we loved the fact that she spoke to them straight away because um, it didn't feel as rehearsed and there wasn't sort of like that practiced response. But actually last night's interviews felt quite rehearsed. Mm-hmm. Mitch and Liberty in particular... Yeah, I thought, wow, you've definitely rehearsed that in your head. Yeah, um, Maybe sure. that's just what they're like as people. Yeah, I mean, I was so bored of it. Yeah, I was I know. so so bored of it. I know. Um, I loved all the reactions from the Islanders about Mitch leaving, like saying he's such a knob, but yeah, you know, he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to be remembered. No, I know. What a knob, but you know, fine, funny. It feels a bit close to home, to be honest. So how could we need? We need. true. <laughs> we need Maya Jammer to maybe spice up these interviews. Is it because of the new format? Is that why we're not liking it as much? Yeah, maybe. And maybe she needs, maybe, without having that audience to bounce off. Mm. She's quite a live presenter, isn't she? Yeah. Like, a lot of the things that she's done, like, Don't Hate the Players, you know, all that kind of show, they were quite interactive, aren't they? Maybe maybe without that buzz. Because mm. um, I thought that Laura Whitmore, she was good in the villa, but she really struggled with live. She was even sort of reading Islanders' names, weeks and weeks into the series and I'm thinking if you don't know this by now I mean you're never gonna know um and I just felt like she struggled during the live interviews whereas Maya's so natural she's just gossiping with her friends isn't she yeah um but there is something about the set and the quietness that just it just doesn't feel right it jars slightly Mm. um so I don't know if anyone's gonna you know take on board our criticism and (laughs) change it but that's how we feel um yeah or maybe it's just the way it's edited because clearly that's very much edited to splice into the main show um and there's so much coming up that 
maybe they're just keeping it quite short and sweet. Mm-hmm. If they're not saying anything that interesting, maybe they are just well, what more did they dice? have to say, really? They, were, yeah. they, they weren't working and that was it. Yeah. I mean, I would just have loved it if Hannah had been like, well, you know, I was just having a nice holiday. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had all these realism. outfits to use up that I couldn't I use when I was out in Liverpool. So I've had to bring them to South Africa. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just love it. So speaking of um, being in South Africa uh, and rehearsed quotes, um, Anton last night saying that he was going to take a trip to Johannesburg (laughs) with the arrival of new bombshell, Johanna. um, Oh God, I always feel bad. Was he fed that line? Has he been rehearsing that line for some time? Like what, I don't know. Would Anton come up with that? Is it kind of peak uh, Anton sort of trash <laughs> he d- it, it definitely was like a shower thought at, at the very least mm. even if someone didn't feed him it maybe he heard someone funnier say it and thought he'd borrow it <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of the production or crew or something yeah um did you hear about katie price having a crush on anton no tell me so she was um doing a podcast and she was just basically saying that she like you know he's quite attractive like she, she could try it on with him and next thing you know, his mum is shutting it down. And she just said, she was brutally honest, you've got too much baggage. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, that's that then. I'm oh. not sure. Maybe Anton would be really up for that. Yeah, um, well, obviously Anton's mum famously shaves his bum. So um, if he was like, mum, can you come around? I need a fresh shave on the bum. I've got a date with Katie Price. <laughs> she go, <laughs> no, they're Scottish. I can't do a Scottish accent. But no, you can stay hairy for I her. really hate it when mums and sons have weird relationships like that. Do and it's you? just too close. It's like a real Freudian kind of, yeah, it's People creepy. quite like mummy's boys usually. No, I think it's, you want them to love and respect their mum. And they yeah. normally, if they have a good relationship, they then respect women. But then there's another type of side of guys where they're just, it's just creepy. Mm. Like the mum's obsessed with them. Yeah. And it's just odd. <laughs> um, so do, we, <laughs> do we think that... <laughs> Why are we doing all our therapy in this? I don't know. Cracking on psych ink. Um, <laughs> so do we think that Anton is finally going to get the girl? Or is Chris no. going to win the battle for Joanna? I think Chris is potentially turning into as kind of tragic as Anton, actually. Don't you think? Because <laughs> he's... <laughs> Because he seems to just flit around. Like one minute he's obsessed with Arabella, then it's Sophie. Mm. Now he was saying about, he started talking about falling for someone. When Joanna comes in, I'm like, what are you talking about? I just think it screams desperation. I don't know how he's gone from this hero to zero in a a week, but he really has for me. Yeah, because I remember early days, I um, was saying, how is this man still single? He's so fit, he's so funny. Um, And maybe we're now realizing why. Yeah, yeah, totally. There are, as we saw with Arabella, some toxic elements there, potentially. Um, So I guess we'll see. I mean, I think we're all backing Anton, really, aren't we? Yeah, of course, but I, I... I fear that it will be the friendship zone again because she's openly admitted that she gets on with guys really well. She has good friendships with them, mm. banter. She trusts Anton. They have a laugh together. So mm. she might. It just might sort of naturally fall into that. Yeah, um, I think and, so. And I think that's what he seems to do with all of them. They see him more as a protector, someone to look after them, mm. but not in a romantic way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I so that brings him. me to tonight's show. Oh no, Flix tea time. Is it a sad tea time today? Oh god. I I do feel quite, yeah, I feel like it oh, is. No. So, um, obviously, we spoke yesterday about how um, Casey is going in there and Georgia Harrison is still nursing a bit of a sore point, a she sore said, spot. She used the word heartbroken. Yeah, heartbroken over Casey. The way he described it, was that they were talking about two different scenarios. Yeah. So, did you see um, in the um, tomorrow night... <laughs> Awful at access. That um, is, no, that was brilliant. Oh, I think it, Ian Sterling needs to watch out. We should do that at the end of the pod. Tomorrow <laughs> on the pod. Um, yes, yeah, so on the Tomorrow Night Teaser, they play a game and it was, um, what's it called when you do the drinking, if you've done a thing? Necking it back. No, <laughs> you know when it's the game um, and you have to drink if you've done something. Oh my God. 
we're too old no, for this. No, never have I ever. Never have I ever. Oh, I see. Sorry, I thought you were like, talking about like what the actual action. It's called drinking flick. Yeah, it's called <laughs> taking a sip of drink. I don't know what you want. Anyway, never have I ever. And it was never have I ever ghosted someone. And yes. then it, it kicked off between Casey and Georgia. Never have I ever ghosted another islander. You should drink. I shouldn't. Oh, you didn't want to speak anymore, and then you didn't answer my messages. Is that not ghosted? We mutually agreed Did on the Did you phone ignore multiple of my messages? I didn't reply to some, and I've replied to some. I didn't ghost you. It sounds like he just ghosted her. Um, basically, all unravels tonight. Georgia is devastated by the situation with Casey. As I said, um, you know, he was. Re she really felt like he was the one that got away she thought like we are great together she really liked him um she's devastated she's crying like really really this hits her oh, um wow. she talks about how you know i'm never enough for people that's really awful. yeah and we know that she's coming obviously into the show having done a lot of work on herself in terms of all the hurt that she experienced with stephen bear um but it feels like the situation with Casey is still really raw. We know now that um, it was November, December when things kind of went wrong between them. Um, and what initially just sounded like a reasonably sensible Casey going, not quite the right time. I mean, question, maybe because they knew that All Stars was coming up and needed to stay single. Ooh. Potentially. Yeah. Because um, it was end of summer and there was talk, wasn't there, at that point? Yeah. Mm. Um, cynical. Like, yeah. Very cynical. But... Um, God, I, I don't know. I feel really sad for her. When I've um, spoken to Georgia before, I've said, I've said to you, she's such a lovely girl. Mm. Um, and she really believes in manifestation. You mm -hmm. can see her doing her meditation. Mm -hmm. And it cracked me up when Tom said about, <laughs> and, um, Tom said about Casey, I don't see you doing your meditation. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine Casey hung over like, oh no, I've got to do this and bloody meditating. Couples that meditate together. Yeah. Stray. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I spoke to Georgia and I, you know, I talked about how, how does she keep her belief that what she puts into the universe she gets out and what she asks for she receives and all yeah. of this kind of stuff that she kind of lives by. You know, she she takes it really seriously. Mm -hmm. And I tried to say it in a sensitive way. Hopefully, I did. I said, but you know that you do really want to meet someone. She's very genuine about that. She mm. wants to find her person. And I'm. I said, you know do you get frustrated that you're putting all of this out there and actually, you know, that's the, th the one thing that you don't have. Yeah. You know, her, her life is perfect, but she doesn't have that one person. And she has put it so lovely. She said, it's, I, it's not the right time, you know, and I believe that the universe is going to bring this perfect guy to me at the right time. Mm -hmm. But that's a constant daily having to tell yourself and remind yourself of that, right? Yeah. Because that can get, that could get you down. Yeah. What a woman. I live by her now. Yeah. She's like, I just, she's my yeah. Bible. I and, love that. But I, and I, I, I just worry that she is going to start turning on it on herself and saying, what's wrong with me? Mm. When actually, I think you can see Casey got out of the villa a year ago. He's just having fun. He's just doing a young guy going out with his best friend, yeah. hooking up with girls. Hashtag it's not young, on his, fun. Yeah, and it's not, it's not his time to meet someone he doesn't want no. to settle down at the moment and unfortunately sometimes you meet the right person at the wrong time and mm -hmm. maybe that's what's happened with her I think so maybe but mm, we don't want Georgia to be devastated especially that's when really these things that. happen yeah mm. so but <clears throat> as we know from these islander couples mm. there can be breakups and then they can really genuinely come back together an example of which are our faves Millie and Liam <gasps> Who split up, didn't yes. they? Yes. And then they got back together, what, what was it, like a year later? They had a year apart. Yeah, um, Liam did Celebs Go Dating, do you remember? Yes. And um, I remember interviewing him and at the time, me saying to him, please, can you get back with Millie? I know that you're on this show and stuff, but you just seem so perfect together. And he, he just, he looked really upset. He was still sort of reeling from the whole breakup. Oh. And he said, you know, I adore her. And the way he spoke about her was just so lovely. I think that's a real sign of a, a nice guy when they speak well about you after a breakup. You were getting choked up. I actually have. <laughs> no. 
I just have a frog in my throat. Amanda, do but you think that we take this a bit too seriously? I get so invested in their <laughs> lives. It's I'm a bit creepy like that. But he, I just love the fact that like they were both really respectful of each other. They mm. went away. They had their time to sort of just like take in the situation. They won the show. They became yeah. huge. Getting all these money deals, they moved mm. in really quickly. Like, everything mm. was a bit much for them, mm. and then they came back together at the right at the right yeah. point. Um, and well, they're a success story, yeah. Yay. And we're going to hear all about that because tomorrow we are chatting to Liam. He's coming on the pod, um, so that will be really lovely to hear a Love Island happy happy ever after. Mm. Which is, I do all, see them being happy ever after, like uh, a Tommy too. Tommy Molly vibes. Yeah, oh, I really hope so. So anyway, we've got that to look forward to tomorrow. Mm. So come back for that, especially. Um, I always love it though when we you share your encounters and interviews with Islanders. Um, I've got a really funny one. Yeah, have I told you about the time when um I was interviewing? Do you remember Medi mm-hmm. from last year? Blink and you'll miss him. Yes. Um, it was the language barrier situation and it was just so funny because it was me and a group of journalists all interviewing him before he went into the villa Uh and um, by no means am I any of those Love Island lads types given I'm 38 and about three dress sizes too big etc etc but anyway he just kept listing his perfect woman and it reached the point where all he could say was long dark hair, brown eyes with a dirty laugh. (laughs) (laughs) And we all... Who could he be talking about? He probably... And it was just... He essentially just kept describing... uh, And we were just like, this is becoming really, really awful and awkward. And we just spent the whole thing laughing at him. And it was awful because we were like, this poor man, it's just because he doesn't have any other words, potentially, to sort of describe, essentially, you know brunettes that talk too much <laughs> <laughs> and it was just and forevermore Medi will now be known as the man who came on his Love Island interview and accidentally just flirted with the whole group of journalists the Cracked whole time with the journalists. yeah and then when he went in there and fell to find love we were like not surprised because <laughs> <laughs> yeah bless See, him your dirty laugh is <laughs> traveling all over now oh Everyone's I feel so self-conscious yes yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> You've got an exclusive update for us, haven't you? Oh, yes, I do. Um, So we mentioned on the pod earlier this week about the mysterious Jim going missing in the villa. So normally in every series you see them working out, but in the actual specified areas, they have all their weights. They yeah. have the, what do you call those things? Like they're hanging off. I was going to say a monkey bar. I don't think that's the actual like term. Pull like pull up. Yeah, like they just... The monkey bar. <laughs> Why is there not an adventure <laughs> playground in the Love Island Villa? There should be. Yeah. There should be. So yeah, they it's they're normally all in there and then you get all the girls ogling them, me being one of them. Yeah. You know, Anton's all sweaty and showing off his muscles. But it's mysteriously been missing. So I was talking to some spies within ITV. Go on. And they were telling me that, no, no, it's all still there. Yeah. The islanders are all using it yeah. religiously every day. Because I thought, well, maybe they they don't want to be filmed working out or something. Yeah, now they're famous. They're like, I don't show me sweating. <laughs> yeah, or, or I want people to pay for my workout regime. Like They don't want to oh, share it for free. I thought you were just going to say, <laughs> pay to watch this on my OnlyFans. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> yeah, who would pay for that? Wow. <laughs> so they, yeah, they they just explained that Basically, there's just been too much drama this series where they don't have... The gym is mainly used as kind of fill-in content. Filler. And they've just got so much that there's it's kicking off all the time where they're, we're having to extend the episodes sort of five, ten minutes already, aren't we? From yeah. the nine to ten. And they just can't fit it all in. So there's no sort of conspiracy theory. The gym is still there. I can report back. See, I'm always bringing you the big news. I've got a new one for Detective Devlin. Detective Devlin. Detective Devlin, that's your name now. <laughs> that I would like you to investigate. I love that. Yes. I've noticed this year there's a lot less water bottle action. You know, usually you that con- sound rude, but yeah, I know what they, you mean. They're yeah. like usually like constantly with the water bottles to the point where it's just like <laughs> non-stop and you. Are they not hydrating enough? Because that concerns me. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's really, that's so true. Yeah. Where has it gone? Okay, right, that's another one to find out. Detective Devlin is on the case. Yeah, and then secondary, point B of that, um, why aren't there water bottles gold? Because you know how the champagne glasses this year are gold, yeah. the whole theming of the all-star situation. Mm-hmm. These are the big questions that people want to know. Yeah. Why aren't the water bottles gold and why aren't they all drinking more water? But surely they are staying hydrated in that heat. I mean, it's a lot hotter, <laughs> right? Out there. Uh, Why is it always so windy? I do feel I for the girls. You would think that like, um, compared to last, obviously 23, 2023, the first time they are in that Cape Town villa, when they all realised rapidly how it was cold and windy, just pop up a big like, you know those, you know on the beach, the wind breaks, mm-hmm. really big one of those. I know. Because it does not look good with <laughs> All your hair flying questions. about. And when they've got you... their gloss on. And then suddenly their hair's covered over and they've got a moustache. And oh, it's just awful for those girls. We need to get Ollie back on and ask him, A, water bottles, B, windbreak. Yeah. Okay. These are the big questions that Hard people want to know. Stuff. Absolutely. Um, I've got more tea on tonight's show for you. Okay. There's a recoupling. <gasps> so I know we'd said the other day, like, when are they going to start getting rid of these people? Mm. And I think now... Two weeks-ish left to go. We're going to start seeing some rapid changes in that villa. Um, No one is safe. Well, no one is safe because the recoupling kicks off. There is a real surprise decision, which sees one of the girls storm off in anger. (gasps) Oh. So, juicy. Okay. So, you know who it is? I don't know who it is. Mm. So, we can properly... Give our theories now. Well, having spoken about the Georgia thing, but then she probably wasn't expecting to be picked. No. So would she be the one storming off, doing yeah. the storming? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I can't call it either. No. I'm seeing maybe this is like a Georgia Molly moment. Oh, I'm bored of that. Georgia Steel. So bored of that. Same. Well, news on that love triangle. Okay. That love triangle has almost pivoted and flipped. So... Casey goes after Molly. <gasps> yes. So Tom, Casey, Molly. Um, and my mind immediately went to these two strike me as the kind of boys that probably might have had a threesome together. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> this is a family podcast. Uh, no, I know. It's lit. Sorry. But I'm going to say yeah. Do you know what it made me laugh about <laughs> watching Tom's face when Casey came in? Did you spot it? It went, he went. He was like <laughs> I mean, obviously he wasn't surprised in the slightest. You've got, you're doing the hair thing on oh. your lip. There you go. Um, it's, he it's wasn't, the wind. It was the wind <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> oh, obviously, um, he, he knew because yeah. they lived together at home and they both knew they were flying yeah. out. And they really did quite a good job of, of tricking all of their fans into thinking that they, yeah. they weren't out in South Africa, <laughs> Africa because Casey was running Tom's account while he was in there. Yeah. And then we've been, he's been posting from home. He's been posting that he was at Clapham Station. Yeah. And we should get sponsored by Clapham Station. I swear we mention it most podcasts. Yeah. Um, but we... <laughs> <laughs> but they are... They're joint at the hip. Yeah. And um, Claudia, Casey's ex, was telling us yesterday that um, she predicts a fallout between them if Casey does go for Molly um, because it's bro code and Tom is really settled and Mm -hmm. he doesn't see his head turning. He said Mm -hmm. that a few times. Mm -hmm. And yet there is Casey still giving it a go. I think the good thing was last night that he did speak to Tom about it. It's not been sneaky, but it's... It's awkward. It's like, right, you're my best mate. I'm going to go out with your girl. I'm going to actually make a beeline for her. Yeah, I know. I just can't see Molly swaying in any way. Casey is too much for Molly. I Mm. think knowing that she spent three years with Callum, who, (laughs) love him, but he's... Young, dumb and fun. You know, as as, as Georgia Steele said, he's a nice cup of tea. Mm. And Casey's an espresso martini. Mm. Because even Tom is so laid back that I don't, you don't, it's not that kind of char- charismatic craziness. Whereas Casey, I just genuinely don't th- think you know what he's going to say next. And do you know what I loved was watching him and Kaz flirt. Yeah. And that brought out such a lovely side of Kaz as well. And when they were talking about um, his her figure and like... <laughs> yeah. And I, it, I think it was a lovely little spark there. So I yeah, don't know I whether agree. that's something that could sort of, you know, well, that's I, what I was know, just going to say, I would love... I would. I I would love Casey and Kaz together. 
I think it would become a real fan favourite couple. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, Casey's got... He's coming in there and he brings, like, such a great amount of energy. Yeah. Um, and fun. Mm. And I you, I think you always kind of fall for that charm from yeah. someone, don't you? So what I was thinking, though, and this is my final question for you, is Bombshells at this point have been watching the show... And have an idea of what couple, you know, what islanders are doing well, what islanders people like, who to go for, and what storylines to pursue. Is Casey actually going for Molly, or does he know it'll be good drama? Uh, Yeah, that's, yeah. And is Casey going to go for Kaz because he knows everyone loves Kaz? I think if that was his game plan, to go for Kaz, he shouldn't have mentioned Molly. Because they're totally different characters. Molly's really reserved quiet Mm. Kaz is the opposite she's just full of fun yeah and I think that if he was serious about Kaz he would have just yeah like gone in there and like focus on her Mm um I don't know is he kind of is he going in there with a game plan I think he's going in there who he fancies just everything's taking it on the chin yeah (gasps) oh well there's so much to look forward to but you're not going to be here with me tomorrow to talk about it no you've replaced me in a recoupling so (laughs) are you going to storm off i'm going to (laughs) storm off right now (laughs) we've got a new girl squad for you tomorrow so we'll chat all about that we'll hear from liam reardon so you know i've had to pack in all of this quantity to make up for the for the you not being here but i'll see you next week yeah excited about it i know so (laughs) join us tomorrow for more tea from the villa and all the goss